welcome to Adventures in Education, a program that spotlights positive things happening in the world of education in Southern Oregon. I'm John Letts. We're going back in time again to see the process that brought us the RVTV series, Adventures in Education. This episode features the second of our classroom projects to be seen on TV. Encouraged by the success of our first televised class project, Undamming the Salmon, we produced another video in 2010, the year that Gold Ray Dam was removed from the Rogue River. This program was called Freeing the Rogue. Students in this production had more leeway in writing their own scripts. A friend documented the dam's removal with a series of photos that provided much of the background for our first use of green screen technology. In 2009, Savage Drop and Dam near Grant's Path was removed from the Rogue River. That inspired our production from Undamming the Salmon. We're here at Savage Rapids Dam, or where the dam used to be. As you can see behind me, the Rogue River is now running free. 2010, Goldery Dam near Medford was removed. The removal was completed in Octo October, just as the deadline closed. But the removal was not easy and there were some unexpected events. Welcome to Freeing the Rope, production of English language learners. As you'll see, there were some scary moments during Gold Ray's removal. While engineers had their plans, the river seemed to have its own way. Hi, my name is Monica and I'm going to tell you about the Gold Ray Dam that was removed. Why did they remove it? They removed it so fish could go upstream easier. Here we see the last view of Gold Ray Dam before it was removed. The picture shows that Kelly Sue has little water. The other picture shows that the workers are making the rope for the work site. The copper dam collapsed, seeing in front of Tolo Slough. A few minutes later, water from Tolo Slough starting to drain out. Workers had to rescue fish stranded in Tolo Slough. Half of the coffer dam was removed by the water from Tolo Slough. The caravan removed more of the coffer dam, and now the trucks are stuck in half of the coffer dam. Here we see another unexpected event. The road river has burst through the coffer dam. There is still water going over Gold Ray Dam. They took out a part of the dam and now they're just going running from Kelly Slough and the road river. This lowered the water so much there's no more water going over the dam. The scum is showing in the water, the main dam part is removed. Kelly's flu was destroyed and all the water was going down. And you can actually see the crib dam. The Goldway Dam was there for a hundred years and that is not a story. The workers took part of the dam away and the water is getting shallow. You can also see the silk growing behind this old crib dam. You can see the fish ladder. You can see the dam and Kelly Slough's disappearing. Kelly Slough is running up. You can see the fish ladder. 
the water is going really fast, and the workers are continuing to take down the dam. Kelly's dude doesn't have water. This shows that the dam is gone, and Kelly's slough is gone as well. The workers are destroying the powerhouse. The workers destroyed Colder Dam, and Kelly Sue water is drained out. The powerhouse is still there. Workers have removed most of it. A few days later, the powerhouse is not there, there at all. Workers continue to remove the gold ray dam. The river is flowing through one side of the dam. Heavy Slough has a little bit of water. The powerhouse, powerhouse is all destroyed. Heavy Slough is all, is all drained out. And the workers are removing the sediment from the river. The water is going through. They have removed the dam from the river. The water is lower than it's been since the dam was built over a hundred years ago. Now the coffee dam is removed, and the old dam is removed, and the creek dam is removed. Now the river is free to go, and Kelly's Slough is gone. A year ago, standing at this spot, I had to talk very loud to be heard over the sound of the Gold Ray Dam. A year later, that dam's been removed, and yes, you can still hear the river, but it's not nearly as loud as it was a year ago. Of course, it's not because of noise that the dam was removed. It was to facilitate fish passage, particularly for salmon and steelhead. At this point, now that Gold Ray Dam has been removed, there are no dams between here and their ocean so that fish can migrate upstream and downstream without having to pass through dams. The removal of Gold Ray Dam turning back 100 years of history and the future for salmon and steelhead fish returning from the Pacific Ocean to spawn. No longer have to navigate towering dams, dangerous fish ladders. They now have no man-made barriers between the ocean and Bear Creek. Salmons have reclaimed the sites of both Savage Rapids Dam and Gold Ray Dam. Fish biologists have now found salmon reds at the site of both dams, eight of them at the Gold Ray site. Salmon and steelhead spawn. They spend part of their lives in Barry Creek and in their tributaries. Chinook salmon and endangered coho salmon have both made reds in the Barry Creek watershed. Learning more about our watershed is an important step in helping. Events like Bear Creek Symposium are a great opportunity to, to learn from others and share what we've learned. We went to this event last year. My favorite activity was a stream table where we learned about floods. <laughs> Ready? Right now. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay, everybody take your hands out for a second. And we just have to, you can't fix it. You just have to watch what happens in the blood for about a minute. And then we'll fix it. Okay, ready? Okay, hands out. Just watch what happens. So it's great snow. You're going to rain and melt all the snow. And we got more water and more water and more water. Is anything washing away? I'm getting a new little channel right there. But again, you can't fix it. It's just water. That one's kind of, oh, it's getting wider. 
Hey, great job. Very careful job. I really like what I'm seeing. Go ahead and cap that. Cap that. Get that cap back on there nice and tight. So, um, and what you guys are going to do once the caps are on nice and tight is mix it up. Make sure the caps are on nice and tight and shake it up. Very nice. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. All right. Your next task is to hold it next to this tool and figure out which color. 6.2. What did you see? 6.0. 6.0. So you guys had precipitation. This was snow from the Oregon Caves National Monument, and it has a pH of 6.2. Any idea what a native plant is versus something that's an exotic or forest plant? Let us check it out. So it was here, like, It did come from other places. Right, very, very good. So these are plants that we use for riparian restoration, basically the plant next to streams and shade. So what we have here is eight different jars, and they're basically common pollutants found in stormwater. And what we have is a list of what the pollutants are in here, and you get to try to figure out what's in each jar. Like we do, you run your tongue along your teeth in the back, and that's what they use to grind up the plant material. Well, check out this, guys. You gotta do the activity first. The other hedgehog that we got came from their batch. They do a lot um, of damage to your area. So these are very good. They keep that population down. So you do want to keep them around. They should have had them here today. They would have had them I know. They'll hold water for a while. Yeah, I've tried it with that. I think they're a little soggy. But... We used to do that with popcorn to get my parents. Oh, no, what a good idea. idea. Yeah. 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 Whoa. The city of Mecca provides protection for some fish bearing sections of Bear Creek and tributaries such as Low Pine. The, that protection is likely to extend to new sections of these streams. In some cases, riparian zones protection will extend 50 feet from the bank of the stream. Our class learned a lot about salmon and steel hit by participating in the salmon wash. We did several stations in the valley of the low pine. One thing that's important to salmon is a healthy riparian zone. That's the area on both sides of the river. A healthy riparian zone has a variety of vegetation. At Salmon Watch, we collected macro invertebrates from the Little River. I stepped into the river with a small net while I didn't catch anything. Our group collected macro invertebrates from underneath the water. Salmon and steelhead need cold, clean water to survive. At Salmon Watch, we learned how to test water at Rope River. Definitely like clean water, right? Is that why they're really special and they don't live everywhere, right? Yeah. But not everywhere is very They special. travel to place to place. My partner, Nezzy, and I walked to the, uh, in, to the river to collect water for testing. Alright, so do you guys know what I mean by this now? Yeah. Now, see how our blood is just a little bit higher than that? So we'd like to keep it in this rain mostly so these bugs can live in the water and. When these bugs are in the water, we know that the stream is healthy. Once the samples were collected, we learned how to identify the macroinvertebrates. The presence of mayflies and stoneflies indicate that the water is clean. Salmon feed on macroinvertebrates dur during part of their life cycle. We learned about the places where salmon lay their eggs. A salmon's nest is called a ray. I saw a salmon clean out her red so she can lay their eggs there. Part of salmon want to spawn in salmon in the river. I saw more than 10 salmon with these special classes. Whoa! No, so if you buried in something in sand, what would happen to it? If it needed oxygen. 
Exactly. Well, you see, this is a fourth grade at Kennedy Elementary. Learned a lot about needs of salmon and steelhead by by doing our fun day at Sandwich. Restoring a healthy repairing zone to Lone Pine Creek may not be possible where the creek runs through the airport, but there are things we can do in the upper Lone Pine Creek watershed to move the stream more early to salmon and steelhead. It's too early to tell if removing dams from the Rogue River brings more salmon and steelhead into Bear Creek watershed, but there is a change in the fish trapped on Lazy Creek during Latino Kids and Books. A fish biologist explains. We captured just Chinook salmon this, this time. We caught about seven fish in a trap that was set overnight on Lazy Creek. And in the past, we've gotten warm water fish, pumpkin seeds, um, red side shiners, and sculpins, uh, and a few coho. But no coho this year, and none of the other species I've just mentioned. So it's kind of neat because Chinook are normally a big river fish. And it's, it's quite extraordinary seeing them utilizing a small stream like this. And with the reason we think that is is because the small stream is about two to three degrees warmer than the main stem. And that allows for more food growth so they come in to take advantage of that. And when they get a certain length, about maybe 120 millimeters, they head back out into the larger stream and continue with their downstream rearing migration, which brings them to the mouth of the Rogue River sometime between mid-August and mid-September. Then they go out in the ocean, they spend up to seven years in the ocean, most of them come back at age three and age four, and they spawn and they die, and the young uh, start to cycle all over again each year. Even the dying of the fish is a present to those who are about to come because the whole ecosystem benefits from uh, the nutrients in the dead salmon carcasses. Our school shares a name with Lone Pine Creek. We can do things in our own neighborhood that will protect and improve the creek for fish that live downstream. What are you doing? I'm going to pull this old paint down that drain, but you're in the way. Don't do that. The paint will pollute the water and kill salmon and steelhead. No, it won't. It's just a drain. Whoever goes down the drain goes to the creek. Fish live in the creek. You'll pollute their water if you pour the paint in here. Oh, I sure won't want that to happen. Why don't you reuse that when you need it? Okay. Hi, Diana. What are you doing? Washing my mom's car. I'll wash it here in the street so the soapy water will go down the drain. Don't do that. Why not? Because it will go down the drain and to the creek and it will kill the salmon steelhead. No, it won't. It goes into the drain and disappears. I'm not putting it in the creek. Whatever goes down the drain goes to the creek. Well, I don't want that to happen then. Where should I wash it at? Why won't you wash it in your mom's lawn? Soapy water just throw on your okay. Protect our creeks, creeks and fish. Never pour harmful things down the storm drain. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> These black bears here do hurt. They do hurt. They, they're an invasion of plants. They're from the Himalayas. They choke out the native plants. No, I mean they hurt my. Sure, they make those sweet blackberries. But they choke out the native plants that were free of wildlife all year. They definitely hurt the environment. No, I mean they hurt my finger. Look! What happened? Hey. Those blackberries just hurt. They sure do hurt. Their big roots destabilize the creek bank. The soil gets washed into the stream and causes sediment. That can cover salmon reds and kill the, the eggs. These blackberries really do hurt. No, they hurt when you crank your finger. Blackberries are invasive species. They choke out native plants. They destabilize the stream banks. 
they hurt my finger. Aww. Learning about our watershed is important. On Latino Kids and Books, we collect the microinvertebrates from Bear Creek. We identify which books were living in the water. Look at this one. I want to see how many tails. Yeah, look at it. Look at the number of tails. See how many you can count. I've been collecting uh, macros on Bear Creek for 15 years. I've never found one of these. This is the first time the group before you uh, have got that in their collection. So it's pretty special to find that. And again, just look at that and pass it on. Okay? That's a caddis fly. We also learned about salmon at the fish dissection station. What do you think is in it? Um, um, blood. Blood, exactly. It's extra right. blood. Yeah, it's extra blood, exactly. Do you, you guys know what it's called? It, has, okay. it starts with an S. A, S, a, S, a S circle? SPL. A spleen? What? A spleen. A spleen. spleen. Yeah. That's exactly good. what this is. Very good. Before you touch it, what do you think it is? Uh, uh, what is it? Lever, lever. Lever. How do you know all this stuff? <laughs> well, we, we, um, um, Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Let, he teaches all those things. Oh, right uh, on. You're lucky, lucky you. We also learned how to tie flies. We learned about fly fishing. Um, I did a, a willy book, a willy ink stuff, I think, and um, it was cool, um, well, I did this little thing where, like, fishes think that they're bugs and, um, they're for fishing, and then, um, I made it. We can do a lot to protect the water quality of Long Pine Creek. Near our school, these are places in the riparian zones that are overgrown with blackberries. The city of Medford has removed these invasive plants from part of the section and is planting native ground covered in trees. That's what a group named Loma Cutzi did on Jackson Creek at Hanley Farms. Marco Bay explains why this is important to Simon Steelhead. So we're over here at um, Jackson Creek along Hanley, Far Hanley Farm. We've been working on this site for about uh, three years now. This area in here was just impenetrable 20 foot tall blackberry brambles with uh, a, not too much native vegetation. So what we're trying to do here is restore the streamside area, the riparian zone get the riparian woodland back by removing the blackberries, the poison hemlock, and then interplanting with the diversity of native species. So along this riparian area, there's a lot of cottonwood, and alder already, and organ ash. What's missing is the conifers, the evergreen trees. The evergreen trees are going to be the future large wood that are going to fall into the creek and last a long time, help create habitat for the salmon, places for them to spawn, uh, back channels, scoured areas. So Lomakatsi, our organization, we've, been, we've adopted this site with Hanley Farm, and this is one of our community volunteer events. We've used our workforce in here. Uh, we've had 18 guys with chainsaws in here initially cutting this stuff down. We've burned it, and now we've, this is our third year. We're coming back to maintain the blackberries and interplant the trees that have died. So this streamside area is a really critical, really important for shade for the fish. We want to shade these creeks so the, the waters are kept cooler. Um, fish have a hard time. If the temperatures go above 64 degrees, um, they can survive in that kind of warm, warm water. So shade along the creeks is real critical, and these tributaries are really important for Bear Creek. Learning about our watershed turns to action, especially during Bear Creek cleanup. People of all ages volunteer to help clean up Bear Creek like these Cub Scouts. We're, We're helping clean Bear Creek Park. 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 Okay. The by um, picking up the trash and taking, taking out the weeds. And we just want to help the environment and make it a better place. That's what we're out here doing today is helping uh, weed and 
uh, learning about conservation and, and gardening and, and, and just helping being a part of our community. Today we're cleaning up Bear Creek and it's fun because we get to clean up all the garbage and we get to use a bunch of tools to clean it up and I just think it's fun. Yay! Jim Bauermeister says there are plenty of objects to be removed from Bear Creek. For several years, we volunteered to clean up the creek, and we found shopping carts, bicycles, engine blocks, all kinds of stuff within the creek. Part of the cleanup effort is removing invasive plants. We're digging up purple loosestrife, which is a beautiful plant, but it's very noxious because it crowds out plants and native plants and foods for wildlife, and um, so it's really harmful and it's not wanted, so we're taking it out. Helping shade giving trees is also important to protect the water quality of Bear Creek. Well, we planted these trees about five years ago. It was one of the Bear Creek Watershed Education Projects uh, tree planting. And what we're doing today is we're trying to find the trees in the competing vegetation, so we're clearing out around them and so that they will have a better chance against the weeds. Lazy Creek is a tributary of Bear Creek, and it's also a, a creek where coho salmon spawn. Uh, planting trees along the creek bank stabilizes the creek bank in order that sediment won't get into the creek. It also provides shade which keeps the water temperatures low. Salmon and other trout need water temperatures of less than 68 degrees in order to survive and thrive. This time of year you're going to start seeing salmon come up Bear Creek and all those salmon right now will be fall Chinook salmon. And some of them are humongous. They're like 30 inches to 36 inches long. And they're spawning in the creek that's about six inches deep at this time of year. We've got to make the creek better for them. We've got to rebuild the salmon runs and make it a safe and hospitable place for salmon. This was a community effort from people removing litter to business donating coffee and hot chocolate. Recent changes on Rogue River should make it easier for salmon and steelhead to reach spawning rest. We can help too by taking care of the Bear Creek watershed and improving the environment for these magnificent fish. Only a few of the kids in this video were able to attend the Bear Creek Watershed Symposium, but seeing themselves on TV was a powerful motivator. 2010 was a productive year for me. It's the year I produced my first episode of Adventures in Education. It's also the year I began production of a four-part series on Ashland's sister city, Guanajuato, Mexico. Part 2 of that series will be featured on the next episode of Adventures in Education. You're watching Adventures in Education. You can watch an archive of today's show and others by going to this web page and following the link to archives. Watch RVTV on channel 15 or 182 or visit our website for the next Adventures in Education. I'm John Letts.